joins us right now from our nation's capital. Good morning, you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. Good morning. There's so much stuff uh, to talk about uh, this, uh, you know, between WikiLeaks and and everything else. It has been revealed uh, last uh, earlier this week. We were talking about Dr. Jill McCabe, who is the wife of a high-ranking FBI uh, guy. Uh, he actually was in charge of the FBI field office in Washington D.C. when they were looking into her private email server. As it turns out, we revealed that uh, something like half a million dollars from Terry McAuliffe's PAC went to her campaign and then a couple hundred thousand dollars from the state Democratic Party. And now, Mr. Speaker, it has been revealed that there was a fundraiser for her and Hillary Clinton personally was a headliner at the fundraiser for the wife of the FBI guy. Mr. Yes. Speaker, how crazy is that? Well, look, the whole as long as you start with the idea the corruption has now penetrated the Obama administration at levels we have never seen in American history, that Hillary is the personification of that corruption, that it has corrupted the FBI, it's corrupted the IRS, uh, the Veterans Administration is clearly corrupt. Uh, you go down the list. Uh, what, what, what the American people are facing is, is a genuine crisis in whether or not we're going to be a government that has the rule of law or we're going to decay like Venezuela into a country where as long as you're powerful, you can get away with anything. Um, I mean, th this is one of many utterly insane things that the Clintons believe they can get away with. And the truth is they do. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, the, you know she's, she's raised huge amounts of money out of presumably honest people who are willing to tolerate having a totally corrupt, dishonest president because they think it's in their interest to do so. Mr. Speaker, this is why a lot of people like Donald Trump. He wants to drain the swamp, as he says, tired of the establishment. Does this happen in Washington on both sides of the aisle, or is this just... No. This is... No, no, look, you, you can go back to the Harding administration in the 1920s, the Grant administration in the early 1870s, uh, maybe a little bit of Truman uh, in, in the late 1940s. None of those are like this. This is the most corrupt person ever to run for the presidency of the United States. The scale, as we're learning from WikiLeaks, the scale and the depth of her collective team, not just her, her collective team's contempt for the law, their willingness to lie, their willingness to run over the law, their willingness to, to subvert the justice system. I mean, uh, the damage Comey has done to the FBI uh, may not be recoverable for a generation. It's, it's, it's terrible to watch one of the great law enforcement institutions of all time decay into this kind of corrupt behavior. And there's no other way to describe yeah. it. So, Mr. Speaker, Obamacare is, of course, collapsing. We're paying attention to it again. But it's been hurting people since it was passed. But it's been hurting a specific group. It doesn't hurt the rich. They've got their own coverage. It doesn't hurt the poor, of course, because they're fully subsidized. It hurts the middle class, the group that doesn't vote Democrat in the first place. Do you think that was by design? I think that the left is very happy if Obamacare collapses because it'll be their excuse to go to a British or Canadian style government run system, which is what they wanted all along. And if you'll notice, the architect of the system said two days ago, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Emanuel yeah. said that the, the dramatic rise in cost was always part of the plan. I mean, if, if you look at the difference, and again, goes, let's talk about honesty and corruption. You look at what Barack Obama said publicly as a candidate, and you look at what his team knew. Uh, it, it, it's a level of dishonesty that is breathtaking. I mean, Richard Nixon must be looking down and wondering what he did wrong, that he c couldn't be as clever as these people are at total dishonesty. Well, and now he's blaming the media for it. Well, of course. You, I mean, you always know with Obama it's somebody else's fault. It's never his fault. Uh, and the truth is, if you look at his approval numbers, you have a country today in which an enormous number of Americans are willing to tolerate almost anything, and they're not digging very far beneath the surface, even though, as you just pointed out, it's costing them money. I have a good friend in Minnesota whose personal insurance, just for herself, right. is going to go up $2,400 a year in January. Uh, and she doesn't know, that's, that's the increase, that's not the cost. Uh, and at the same time, of course, her deductible is going to get bigger. So sure. why are Americans suddenly willing to put up with this level of corruption, do you think? Uh, I think it's partly where the culture is. I, I think we are numb from all the stuff you see every day in social media. Where uh, I, I describe it as the age of the Kardashians. I mean, we're mm -hmm. we're in a period where, you know, you can do almost anything and get away with it. Uh, you can say almost anything and get away with it. 
uh, and people are kind of numb. The, 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 the whole the, the school system has taught don't render judgment, you know, don't discriminate, mm -hmm. don't have a sense of right and wrong. Well, you've got two or three generations now that have been told, you know, you shouldn't really be judgmental. Well, the truth is, corrupt, honest, that's a pretty big judgment call. And that goes against everything we've been teaching for three generations. Sure. Mr. Speaker, we're 11 days out. Uh, mainstream media is saying, you know, for the most part, she's ahead. She's going to win. Show's over. Don't even bother voting, uh, you Republicans. Don't, don't uh, waste gas uh, driving to the polling place. You've seen a lot of elections. You know, 11 days out, how does it appear? And I know you're in, on the Trump train. How does he win? Well, I think I think he wins for, for, by by two different factors. One is by the continual every single day weighing down of Clinton with the truth, which is happening around him. Uh, and if he lets that continue to happen and doesn't distract people uh, with other kind of issues, it'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, the, and I think that is wearing down her, her support among independents, her support among Democrats who aren't automatic partisans. Uh, and then second, he's got to make sure he turns out his vote. I think things like uh, the, 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 the new deal for African-Americans, which he announced two days ago, his contract with the American voter, uh, which is a very attractive go down item by item compared to what he stands for and what Hillary stands for. Uh, I think that, you know, if they if they have a positive Trump and they allow the negative stuff to continue to play out on Hillary, I think he has a very real chance mm -hmm. to win. It, it's absurd to suggest that this election is over. Uh, and I'm, I'm always amazed that, that uh, the people, particularly on the left, who want to rush in and explain that it's all over. I remember when John Kerry was elected in 2004, except he wasn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> and what about establishment Republicans who have kind of backed away from Donald Trump, but now, 11 days out, for instance, uh, Nikki Haley yesterday said, you know what, I am going to vote for Donald Trump. And it's about policy. There are more and more establishment Republicans going, realizing, you know what, if if I don't vote for Trump, really that is a vote for Hillary. Yeah, you know, from, from an establishment perspective, if they come out for Trump and he loses, it's not their fault. I mean, they can say, look, I did what I could. I'm sorry he lost. If they don't come out for Trump and he loses, they become the people who are the margin of defeat. Right. Uh, and I think that's a big factor. The other thing that's going on is, as you watch even you know, MSNBC Morning Joe, for example, your competitor, out there spending 13 minutes attacking Hillary, I mean, you know things are bad when MSNBC attacks Hillary. And I think that says to the, the, the establishment Republicans, she is so sick. This, this whole process is so corrupt. How can I possibly not vote for Trump? And I think that is gradually getting people back yeah. in to say, yeah, I'm going to be for Trump. I think that's exactly right. The speaker, right. great to see you this morning. Thanks a lot for that. Thank Good you. Good to be with you. Coming up, brand new details about the accident involving Governor Pence's 